Hello, welcome to the No Chofters podcast on the OLB. I'm your host, Stel, and joining me, wow, a gentleman who has been there, seen it, even worn the t-shirt. It's uh, Guido Hoffman. Guido, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to you, Stel, and thank you for the invitation. I am fine. I am fine. Now it's Christmas time, and this is a special time. For, for the most people all over the world. And so even in this, in this special time with, uh, with the corona, with the COVID, we are, we are thinking in our family and thinking to have a, a smoothly Christmas this yeah, year. Yeah, we have never experienced anything like this before. So it, no one really knows how to deal with it. I guess we have to listen to what the governments say, but in all fairness, do most governments even know how to cope with this? It doesn't doesn't seem like they do in in, in England anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are right. It is a, a, a brand new, a really new situation for 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 everybody, and so you have to have confidence to the people. Where are you thinking? They are. They know what they are doing. Mm. Yeah. It is not not easy for for many people. It is not easy to believe in in this in this uh, things what they are doing. But I think we have no other choice. And hopefully, I think on Sunday here in in Germany, we are starting with uh, vacuums with 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 uh, yeah, vacuums. Vaccines, yeah, 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 yeah. And and then we are hoping we. We can fight better against yeah. the virus. Well, hopefully, twenty twenty one will be a, a better year. Um, yeah. But but let's talk about your football career because this is this is what we're here for. And you had a spell at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Is that correct? Well, I started in Mönchengladbach. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. I started there. Yeah. And you had Jupp Heynckes as your head coach. You played with yeah. Stefan Effenberg. That was a good team. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. And that is what I always say. That was the best coach ever what I had, was you Pankes. Even if I did never played. But uh, of course, when you are young and you are full of power and you want to, to show your, your performance and the coach is thinking, well, that it's not enough, you, you don't understand. Mm. Yeah, but mm. later, years later, we met us in Spain and we met us here in Germany. And then you, you, can, you can imagine how good was this coach for me when I was young. Yeah, I, can, I can imagine. I mean, the, the younger viewers will uh, remember Jupp Heynckes for winning the treble with uh, uh, Bayern Munich, Bayern München. Uh, yeah. The famous victory at Wembley when Ian Robin scored in the Champions League final. But he was always a fantastic coach, even at a young age, wasn't he? Yeah, well, it, it, he, he was different, of course. When you are young, you have not the experience mm. when you are 20 years, 25 years older, yeah? But uh, he had always, li- like, like Raufmann, he was always straight, mm-hmm. yeah? Also in the, in the, in his, when he was younger. And uh, I think it was, in, in this time, he was one of the youngest coaches in, in Bundesliga, yeah? And with this experience later, he, he made his career with Real Madrid, with Bayern Munich, and what else? Yeah, mm. it's, it's, it's not easy when you are young to believe in your, your boss, yeah. Yeah, in your coach, because when you are young, you will not understand everything what he is telling you, but he will know it really, really good. And he knows it really, really good. And still, I'm very thankful to, to met him and to have him like, like head coach. Mm. Now, I, I remember that was around about the time when Germany had reached the World Cup final in 86. They lost to Argentina, but then they won at Italia 90. Now, for me, Italia 90 was my favourite World Cup, probably because that was the first one that I remember. But at the time, I had such uh, a respect. I, think I still do. I had such a respect for West Germany or the German national team because my favourite players were the three at Inter Milan. Uh, Andreas Bremer, Lothar Matthäus and Jürgen Klinsmann. Yeah. And I had friends at school that liked the three Dutch players at Milan. 
But for me, it was always those three players. So to see them win the World Cup with Beckenbauer as, as head coach, with Bodo Ilgner in goal, who was fantastic. The, the list goes on. It was such a fantastic football team. But Stefan Effenberg was East German, wasn't he? Am I correct? Was he from No, East no, no, no. He was, oh, he was West German. German. Yeah, he's oh, from Hamburg. Hamburg. He's from Hamburg. Hamburg. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah so and I, we, I was admitted it was Sammer that was East German. Was it Sammer? Yeah, that was Matthias Sammer. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah, right. yeah. right. right. I remember when, when Germany unified, it was a uh, Euro 92, wasn't it? That was the first tournament that they were that they were a unified Germany. Is that that's correct? Yeah, I see. Was it in England? Oh, where it was. Euro ninety six or was it in England? I think in in England he he was he was there with uh, Sammer and Kunz and all this this yeah. and Klinsmann, the diver. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was a good player though, I was a very good player. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was what was Effenberg like as a, as a footballer? Because again, I remember him more when he was at Bayern Munich, and he was a very very industrious central midfielder, very much how I'd say I don't know uh, Bastian Schweinsteiger was. They're very similar footballers, but Effenberg had a little bit more going forward. Was was he always that talented as a youngster? Yes, yes, he was. He we we started together in Mönchengladbach, and between him and me, there was a big difference. Mm. He was full of confidence, maybe too much, but from the beginning. But for for his career, it was exactly this what you need for to be a leader. Yeah, and he he on the pitch he was he was incredible, but also outside the pitch he was incredible. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and uh, he showed it to everybody. Look. You, do you know who, where I am? Yeah, I am Stefan Effenberg. And well, he started, uh, he, he, when he was young, he was in Hamburg. He came from Hamburg, I think, to Mönchengladbach. And then later he was in Italy also. He was in Florence. And then of, of course his, his, his great time was, was in Bayern Munich. And oh, to yeah. be a leader in Bayern Munich, yeah, and captain in Bayern Munich, you have to have confidence. That, that's right, and I think didn't he join after the time when they were when they were labelled FC Hollywood? It was after that <laughs> time, wasn't it? So it was very difficult to kind of get back into the old Bayern in the sense. I remember with, like, with Klaus Augenthaler and all those players when they were a solid machine. But at that time, it was FC Hollywood with Trapattoni losing his his marbles in in, in press conferences. Yeah, and yeah, they kind yeah, of yeah. Changed it all around and. You know, there was a fantastic team. And, you know, Manchester United is the English team that I follow. And 1999 was obviously a massive season for both teams because they were going into the Champions League final, winning the domestic title and the domestic cup. So whoever won that would have won the treble. Yeah. So obviously United won it. And it was, you know, as a, as a follower of the club, it was great to see. But at the same time, when you see the likes of Kufour and Lothar Mateus, who never won a European cup, it was a little bit sad as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, like you said, uh, Man U and, and Bayern Munich in this time, they, they had also, I, I'm not really sure, I'm not 100% sure, mm -hmm. but also they had players from, from her academies, mm -hmm. from her own academies. Yeah. Yes. And uh, you can imagine this, this players, young players in this big clubs and they are playing and they are performing really good. So they, these are special players, mm. yes. And I think in, in these big teams, even today, you have, you have special players, yeah. Maybe today, in this time, it is not like, like before with, with the young players from, the, from her own academies, but I think the, the clubs, the big clubs, they are, they are changing her mind and still they are thinking or they, they they renew her thinking hey this is our capital in in the in the in the, in, in our academies we have to work in this direction because like you see it right now and especially in this year you you can't pay so much money for for really good good players yeah. yes some clubs, yes, they can, but 
the, the most of them, they can't do this. So mm -hmm. they have to, to move her focus again to, to other points where, where they can pick up some, some good players. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I, I, I'm not sure in, in Menu, you, you had also this generation oh, with, yes. with this four or five players from, from her own academy. Yeah. But that, yeah. that that generation is um, with that generation at Manchester United. They were very lucky in the sense that all of them grew up together. So Beckham, Scholes, the Gary, the the, the Neville brothers, uh, Nicky, but they all grew up together, and we haven't seen that happen at Manchester United for a long time. I, I, I can't remember the last time Manchester United produced six or seven quality youngsters. But in the Bundesliga, when you see the likes of Dortmund and Bayern Munich and Leipzig, they not only produce youngsters, but they find youngsters from all over Europe. And yeah. I think that's the most admirable thing about the Bundesliga that I can say, because <clears throat> even from the mid to late 80s, you saw players from Czechoslovakia, as it was known, yeah, yeah, yeah. from all different parts of Europe, Hungary, Austria, all yeah. these different countries. But in the UK, it was primarily worried about the youngsters, but it was mostly bringing in big names because the Premier League was about to be introduced. So they wanted to bring in the Zolas, the yeah. Ravinellis. And the Bundesliga has never really been like that. They've been very smart as to producing youngsters. So my next question to you is when you were at München Gladbach, it was a very, very strong core of young players. But how as a youngster were you treated by the coaching staff? Because Many youngsters these days, they have social media, they have all different distractions. But back then, th there was nothing like that. So you were more focused on the game than anything else, no? Well, yeah, you're right. It, it was a completely different time. Yeah, that mm. is really clear. But I remember really good the first day when I stepped in the, in the locker room, I was waiting. I was waiting, standing and waiting till somebody told me where I can sit down. Because in this time, when I started also, München Gladbach was a big team in Europe. Nice. And we have also very, for, for Germany, famous players. Yes, and good players. And when I was 18, I came in and as I was thinking, well, this player sitting there, there, there. Oh, I know him, I know him, I know him. And then I was waiting till the, the physio was coming and he told me, hey, Guido, this is your place. <laughs> then I was sitting down and waiting. Waiting. And I was looking what, the, what they are doing from where they are picking up her, 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 her training uh, addresses and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I saw, ah, there is something. Ah, this is my, this is my number. Okay. Yes. And it was. And then you have Effenberg. He was coming in and come on. Where is my place? <laughs> different mentality. Different yeah, 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 yeah. So, so different, so, yeah. So, so during your time mentioning Gladbach, your early days, were there were there any players that you looked up to or gave you advice? Yeah, advice to me, not really. No, not really. They were they were really focused on her team, the first yeah. eleven. Yeah, but. Uh, of course, you, you had players like, uh, maybe they are not so famous in English, Uwe Rahn, Frank Mill, Wilfried Hannes, uh, goalkeeper, yeah? So you, you, you tried to pick something out from, from them, but it was a, a closed circle. It was really, really difficult, yeah? And so I played then in the, in the reserve team. Yeah, and in the reserve team, it was different. Yeah, you had also sometimes uh, older or famous players were coming for, to the training session, like Rainer Bonhoff. Yeah. Yeah. Or Winfried Schäfer. They okay. came wow. and they played. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes. And they gave you advice. Yes. Because they were more out of the circles. And they, they started her second career, her second life. They finished maybe with professional football and then they gave. But in the, in the, in the team, you, you had to be part of the circle. 
then you are in the circle yeah. and you are one of them. Yeah. yeah. You needed to earn that respect, didn't yes. you? Yes. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I know your, your, probably your most successful spell as a footballer was at Kaiserslautern. And that's your the club that your hometown club, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's not my hometown. I'm I'm not born here in the south uh, southwest from Germany, but uh, I spent a lot of time here, and still we are living here with with my family. Yes, mm. it was it was a brilliant time. It was yep. coming from zero to one hundred to me. Yeah. Unbelievable, because when you look at that squad, you had the likes of Tom Dooley, an American defender that played at the World Cup. Uh, Miroslav Kadlec, fantastic yeah. Czech midfield uh, defender, I believe. Bjarni Goldback, who I believe had a spell at Chelsea. Um, who else? Do, do, do. Bruno Labbadia. Yes. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, what? yeah. This was but, some team. Yeah, but you, you, you cannot imagine the year before we won the championship, they were playing on the bottom in the league. Yeah, and they didn't change the team so so much. Yeah, I was coming from a second division team to K Town here, and I it was not planned that I am uh, one of the first of one of the starters. Yeah, yeah. I was planned like back up. Right, but sometimes it happened like it happened. <laughs> <laughs> well listen if, it, if it's meant to be it's meant to be but what i know obviously winning the bundesliga was probably your proudest moment at the club but when you look at that season as a whole what would you say were the the big results that made you guys believe that we're going to win this bundesliga we played at home versus karlsruhe and this is okay. a derby here yeah and it was 2-1 karlsruhe so they were winning. All right. And still we had, I don't know, three, four, five minutes to, to go. And we won 3-2. Uh -huh. and, and from this day on, we were thinking, Madre, my gosh, we can. <laughs> at, at home, everybody we can beat. Yep. So we can be focused on the, on the away games. And step by step, we will see. But at home, we can beat everybody. And we did. It was, it was some achievement because, let's be honest, Bayern Munich were, were dominating uh, at the time. And for you guys to just slip through the net and, and win the title, I think, was that, was that the last time they actually won the, the Bundesliga? The last time they won it? Won it mm. I, well, you mean K-Town? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we won 91. 91, yeah. That was the last time they, they won it. Yeah? This, yeah. this was a surprise for, for everybody. But in 98, Keitan won the last time the Bundesliga. Oh, they won in 98 and, as well. And this was a bigger surprise because they were coming from second division back in first. Okay. And they were champions. And it was, and uh, well, this is history. Everybody here knows this. And the first game in the league was in Bayern Munich. And we won. And... This was also, this was, the team was in the mood, in mm. a good mood, yeah. And uh, when, when you start to believe in yourself and as group, everything is possible. Yeah, you can beat everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and it, it goes back to Greece winning the Euros in 2004. It goes back to Leicester winning yeah. the, the Premier League. It happens so much, happens so much. And, and you're right. But going back to that season when you won the league in 91, um, what were the celebrations like in the city? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sleep for days, it was, did you? <laughs> it, it, was, it was incredible. It was incredible. Well, we had our last game, uh, away game in Cologne. And my hometown is near Cologne. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so my family was there and friends were there. And I remember really good the way to the stadium. We only saw cars from Cape Town and fans from Cape Town. And in Cologne, I think to this time, 50,000 people can, can be there or more. Mm -hmm. And more than the half was from Cape Town. And we stepped in before the warm up. We are looking to the to the pitch and everything, and it was full. This was never happened, and it was full. 
and you stepped in and you you felt like oh today nothing can happen we will win look nothing can happen yeah and then after the game when we won it was incredible it was dangerous yes mm. it was dangerous because the the fans were coming on the pitch and pitch invasion <laughs> taking yeah, your yeah, shirts yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good and uh, yeah you 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 didn't you I, I didn't felt really safe because everybody was coming to you mm. and were were pressing you and was closer 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 and but finally well we we survived and then we made a tour on the Rhine by boat by ship and I can't remember really good what happened. <laughs> Been drinking too much, huh? <laughs> <You're> drinking, <yeah. laughs> no, we, I didn't drink. I celebrated. <laughs> there you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, in, in, in terms of that season, though, who would you say was the toughest opponent you faced there in the Bundesliga? In, in that, 91? Yeah, or... that, that season, yeah. Poof. You see... I really, I really can remember who was who, about my opponents because we were only focused in in ourselves. Right, right. Yeah, but uh, the matches versus Karlsruhe they were always really, really tough. Yeah, because this this is derby, like I said before, and uh, always it is it was fighting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In ninety one. I, 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 I don't want to say we played a really nice football. No, we didn't. But you but did what we you had played. to do to win. You did what you had to yeah. do, play to your strengths. Yeah. That was a target to win. Yeah, And today, sometimes the difference is, oh, we want to play a, a really nice football. And you want to win. Mm. But sometimes this is not possible, to play beautiful and to win. Mm. Yeah, and not every not everybody can can follow this this direction mm. so like like we said and like germany was in this time at first we have to fight and then we have to start to play football that's right and yeah, this changed also a little bit uh, in whole germany but really an opponent no, but I, I know the team Karlsruhe was always, always <laughs> difficult. Yeah. And the coaches were difficult there and the, the pitches were, were close. So the coaches were really near to the players that were playing on the wing. And I was a winger. I was playing on the wing. And then you, you can hear everything what he told to you. And he said, he said, I, I remember from the coach from Karlsruhe, he, he, told me or he said to me or to his defender come on come on kick him give him pressure he is not good he is afraid come on you are better and i was saying hey come on what happened with you yeah. but this was this was the style fantastic brilliant well talk to me about tom dooley because uh, we've got a lot of american listeners and um, they'll want to know about this footballer who I believe was actually born in Germany. Is, is, is that correct? Was, I think he was born in Germany. Um, and he, he started off, uh, I, think, I can't remember which club he was at, but he ended up at, at Leverkusen after Kaiserslautern. But what was he like as a, as a teammate? Because we know nowadays there's a big connection between Germany and the United States. We've seen several footballers with German mm. parentage <clears throat> or, or, or background playing for the US national team. But Tom yeah. Dooley was one of the first, wasn't he? Yes, I think. And I think he, he didn't know this before that he can play for States. Oh, yes. right. <laughs> it, it starts With a name like Tom Dooley. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I think he, he didn't know that it was possible. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. And uh, well, he's he was also coming from, from Hamburg not from Hamburg, from Hamburg this is here close, close to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, li like me, but he came before, he, two years before he came, he came to Cape Town. And um, then of course he saw the possibility. He was not, he was not uh, uh, good enough 
or he was not choosed from the mm. from the national uh, uh, coach from Germany for the German team. So he saw his chance to play World Cup with the States, yep. and then he changed. And I think this was the, the, the biggest and most important step for him in, in his life, because from this time on, he was he was starting to to create his own name and his his vision what what he had from from his life. He is accepted in in the states. He is accepted in Europe or especially in Germany. I know that he was coached from the Philippines. I think mm -hmm. from, from the he was national coach from the Philippines. And he changed there also a, a lot of things, and it was a very successful time for him. What he's doing right now, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the, the last the last call what we had was that he finished in the Philippines, and he was looking for for a new challenge. I think he went to but, Vietnam. I think he went to Vietnam. Ah, you see, now he's he, he, yeah. maybe now it's he is in Asia more yeah. more. Uh, yeah, it's more, a big market. It's big football yeah. market. Big, oh, big football. Yeah. This, is a, this is a really big market, but the quality from this market, I was three years in China. The quality of this market is not mm, I can imagine. Not really good. I not really. Good. But yeah, I can't I, I can't I can't understand it, but it's not really no, good. I, I guess they've got other distractions and other other sports, I guess, but Tom Dooley, I'll never forget he scored against England. Uh, and I think Alexi Lalas also scored in that game. It was 2-0. Um, mm. And people were saying in the UK, how can the United States beat England? But England weren't really good then. But I think he also scored twice against Germany as well, didn't he? Scored twice for the, scored twice for the, uh, for the US men's national team against Germany as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. This, this points I will forget when Germany... <laughs> <laughs> yep, 1993 scored twice in the friendly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, Tom Tom was was not the, the big player. Mm. Yeah. He, he, he was tall, yes. But uh, he, he's, he was uh, the big player that he can he can decide things in the match or whatever. But he was always there. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes you, you you didn't saw him, but he was there. Yeah, and yeah. then then he he made the, the right decision. Absolutely, yeah, this is these players are very 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 good for 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 your team. Mm. You have to have 100%. these players in your team, not in the opponent team. Hundred percent. I think we need to do another show just on Bundesliga because we could talk all day about that, can't we? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am free for this. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Okay, just, just a quick thing before we move on to your time at Omonia. Um, you also play for Leverkusen. And by Leverkusen, what, weren't the Leverkusen is what we see now at the Bay Arena. Um, but then again, you had quality players like Christian Vaughan, the central defender, uh, Lupescu, uh, Romanian midfielder, very good footballer, very technical. Heiko Herlich, very underrated German player. Ulf Kirsten, the, the striker, and Andreas Tom. This was a very good team as well. Very good team. Of course, of course, this this was and this is a very very good team. This is a, a good club. Of course, they they have the support. I'm not sure if they have the same support as they had before, but when when I was there, it was it was a quick time. It was only half and see half half mm -hmm. year, yeah, half of the season, but. Uh, this was also close to my hometown, so I decided to, to do this. And uh, we won the cup in this year in, in Leverkusen. I was not playing so many minutes there because it, it, was, it, it was not working, working mm. as, as it was working here in Cape Town because the style was different. Yeah, the playing, the football style was was really different. Like you, like you said, with these players, Ulf Kirsten, Andreas Thom, Dupesco, these were really, really technical players mm -hmm. and really good players. Yeah, and Franco Foda, he was in defense. Yep. This was 
Th this was yes, yeah. from 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 the names from the names of the players. It was a much much better team than K Town. Yeah, but like yeah. I said before, you this was the time first is fighting and then is playing. Yeah, that's right. And, that's right. And by a Leverkusen, they want always where they want to play. And then sometimes, or many times, you are the second winner. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, mm. so you make the move to Cyprus. To <laughs> Same time as yeah. uh, Ralfman. Uh, yes. Wow. Now, first of all, did you know much about Omonia when you, when you got the phone call? Would you like to come to Cyprus? <laughs> no. No. I, I, will, I will tell you the truth. I, I, I know nothing, nothing, yes. And uh, it, it was an adventure, yeah. Well, st even when they called uh, for, for, to, for to come to Cyprus and to speak, it was not sure that I will stay. And we decided it when, when I was there, yeah, and wow. I even, even when they called me, I didn't know how many players they have from foreign <laughs> countries, how many it was allowed to have. All these things, I was, I was really virgin. Yeah, I, I, I was there and then I started to think about it. Was, was, the, was the money good? Is that why you decided to go and have a little? Or maybe you came to the point in your career, you were like, I want to try something new, see different environments. I wanted to see uh, another country. Mm -hmm. This is what I wanted, yeah, because my my wife uh, is Spanish. Okay. And it was the time I was not the youngest player in, in Harmonia. Yeah. Yes, the, my career was going more than less down. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I said, well, it should be nice to play and to live in another country as in Germany. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and then the possibility was to play there. And when we arrived, it was the first time for me in Cyprus. And I liked it. Yeah. And so we decided to stay. Yeah, I was not thinking in money. I was not thinking in how good as a team, how good as a players, where, from where are the players. No, I, I liked Cyprus, and then I and then I started to to like the country and to yeah. like the people. That is that was a process. It was not that I would say, oh, it was always my dream to go to Cyprus. No, that is not the truth. Yeah, it was an opportunity, and then we decided to do it. With your wife being Spanish, was it easier for her to get used to? the island because the Cypriot and Spanish ways are very similar. In fact, some of the words that we use are similar to Spanish. So I, I guess it, it, I'm just assuming that it was easier for her to, to get used to, as I said, the environment than yourself who comes from Germany, very different mm. kind of mentality. Of course, it was easier for her than for me. Yes. And that was helping me to adapt mm -hmm. better to the to the Cyprus way of life, yeah. yeah? But uh, I was all like like she is Spanish. I I was always thinking one day we will go to to Spain. Mm -hmm. I will not stay in Germany my whole life. I would like to see other other countries, and so we started in, in Cyprus, and it was a short time. And uh, I was not happy to leave Cyprus because I wanted to stay longer. Mm -hmm. But like it is, that's yeah. life. And, and it was a really, really nice time there. It must have been a bit of a culture shock for you because, look, I, I live in the UK, but I've got relatives in Cyprus and I go out there as often as I possibly can. And every time I go, I always see something that surprises me. Like, for example, I went in October and I was surprised at how much better the driving is in Cyprus. Before, 
It was unbelievable. Red light. What is a red light? That doesn't exist. It means go. <laughs> so you coming from Germany, where everything is so efficient, you know, your, your buses arrive two minutes early. Your, your mini cabs are always they're safe. Everything. The roads are perfect. You go to Cyprus. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> <What is that? laughs> Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. But it, it depends on yourself. Yeah, it depends on you. Mm. You, you. You can accept it or you can block it. Mm. But when you will block it or when you will fight against this, you cannot fight against the country. You cannot mm. fight against mentality. Yes, and you are guest in this, in this country. So what kind of possibility do you have? You have to adapt, mm. yes? And you have to respect it and you have, finally, you have to accept it. And well, the driving, well, this was the first time was really dangerous. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> With left and right and oh my gosh, no, no, no. And well, the first time when I stepped in, in the car, it was, they, they, they had one car for us. I was on the wrong side. To drive. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, no, this will not work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but finally it was working and nothing happened. Thanks, yeah. God. Yeah. But you, you must have seen a lot of things as well because, you know, being a, an Omonia footballer and a foreign player at that, you were one of the first to be out there on the island as an, as an Omonia player. I know Omonia players had, Omonia had foreign players in the past, but to be German as well, to come with that history, with that background, having mm. played for teams that won the Bundesliga, having played with the likes of, as we mentioned, Effenberg, all these other players. Was there big pressure on you? Did you feel any pressure? Yeah. Yes, yes. As they, uh, as they expect the championship. Mm. Not, not so much, only the championship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, better it was uh, to give the assist and to score, the, to score at the same time. Yep. Yes, it was a lot of pressure. But... Uh, well, it, 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 it is like this, and this is what you have to know when, when you are playing football. It doesn't matter what, what kind of CV you have or where you played, and doesn't matter in which category you are playing in first division, second or amateur, you always have pressure. And not only the pressure from outside, you, you have also the pressure from yourself your own pressure what you're doing on yourself because when you are go play this is a mentality and not only the German mentality you would like to win and this here starts the pressure yep that's right and then it and it depends that's then right. it depends well, yeah. the thing is you you when you were telling me about the time you started at Munchen Gladbach and you saw all these players that were older than you, that were far more experienced, and you had to earn that respect, was it similar going to Omoni? Because at the time we had Churupa, Gayafa, uh, Haridu, who else did we have? Nicola, we had, uh, oh, I don't want to mention that player, Maleko, but he was all right. I don't want to talk about him too much, and I don't really want to mention his name again. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Kshurupa, uh, there's a whole heap of players there that had that, that uh, lineage as a, as a quality Omonia player, as a historic Omonia player. You going to a foreign country now at a brand new club, are you looking at these players and thinking, okay, I need to kind of earn their respect now? Because even though I've come with a better CV, with more honours to my name, bigger honours, these are the, the hometown players. These are the, the legends of the club. Yeah, I, I, if I remember well, in my time, it was only allowed to play with three foreign players yep. in the starting 11. And I think you can have four or five in, in, in the whole team. And, uh, well, one of the choose foreign players, like, like Gahan and uh, Boban, I think Boban he called. And... Um, in football, it's like you, you, you can't win alone. I was yeah. thinking this. Yes. In one match in Cyprus, Raufmann can be win, couldn't be win alone. Yes. Yeah, he scored eight goals in one game. <laughs> yeah, in one game. 
he's, he's brought from out of the and from behind the goal he scored <laughs> yeah it, it was it was incredible he, he couldn't do everything and ev and everything was happening but uh, the, the 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 target or the idea when i came to ammonia was to, to be part of ammonia not to be the one in ammonia right i wanted to be part part with uh, with uh, with the cyprus players of course to have a connection to them with them to to be part also of of her life social life and football life because in my time we we didn't had every day two times training yeah some players were they had a job from the mm -hmm. from the cyprus players yeah I think we call Yotis Panayotis. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. He was owner from a sports shop. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah. and uh, many times we went there and said, come on, we drink a coffee or whatever. And the frappe, it called it. Frappe. It was a cold coffee. Frappe, it was frappe, a, yeah. <laughs> it was the first time when I drank this, this coffee, and it was Cyprus. Still, I'm drinking this. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> and no, I I wanted to be part of of this club. Yeah, and then sometimes you are you are not looking to your own your own success. Mm. You are looking to your team success. Yeah, and and like it is, of course, the first the first players to be the first they are the foreign players yeah absolutely they, they, they had to be a different between foreign player and and hometown players and then sometimes when not winning you are the one who missed but this is this is all over the world the same yeah yeah, yeah. this is in china this is in cyprus and uh, this is not maybe in England or in, 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 in Germany or in France or in Spain, because there you have another level. The level in Cyprus is not as high as in England, Yeah, for example. True, but uh, it, the thing is you, you, you hit the nail right on the head there because I, I've noticed, especially recently, that when a team doesn't get a good result in Cyprus, a lot of fans will say, well, these foreign players, they don't really care too much. They don't care as much as our players. But that's not necessarily true because the players that I've got to know that have played for Omonia past and present, they love the club. They absolutely love the club. They've, they've even described it as a family. So losing a game hurts as much to them as it does the supporters. And I guess that's what happens when you join a club like Hormonia? Because the one thing I've learned about this club over the years I've been supporting it, when the fans and the players are together, it's such a strong bond. It's so strong that it, the, the, the feelings are mutual. They, they resonate within each other. And I guess when you join the club, a lot of fans were like, oh my goodness, there's, we've got a German player. That's one loads of things. And they took to you as, as one of their own, no? Of course, of course, and this this is nice. Believe me, this is nice. And and you 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 said it. It it, it had to be in a in a club with history. Mm. And and this is like like here in Cape Town, even if they are playing now in third division, if the people can watch the game on pitch directly after the virus, mm. it will be full. Yeah, they will come. If you win or if you lose, they will come. Yeah, and this is the same like like uh, in in Omonia. They are they are one. Yeah, the fans and and the players mm -hmm. and the club. This, yep. this had to be one. And of course, you you can be successful without to have these three things thrown together. Mm. But for to be for to make history for to make this successful more than one time you have to be strong as as to be united yeah 100 yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me ask you something about the quality of players in the squad because we know that the cypriot 
standard of football wasn't great back then, but <clears throat> there were some some quality players in the league. Now, if you remember your time at Omonia, were there any specific footballers that maybe you felt they could have played in the Bundesliga themselves? Were there any any Cypriot players you thought that could do it at Omonia? Kostas Kajafas. Yeah. He was young when I was there. Mm -hmm. And he was this Essenberg mentality. Okay. This was my feeling. Yeah. He had something special. You will not see this always, but he was young and you saw this sometimes. And so I was thinking, oh, when he is growing up, you can see this special good things more times. And then he, he, can, he can take this trip to Europe and to try it. Why not? And this was a player where I was thinking, yes, this Costas Kayafas, madre mia. <laughs> it was a very technically gifted footballer, wasn't he? Very, and, and the leadership qualities he, he possessed obviously led him on to be a club legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this was... This was not clear for me, no, this is, this I don't want to say, but I saw this because I was an old player for him, yeah, mm. and I saw this young player and I was thinking, yes, when I was young and your age, I didn't have this. I had to work yep. for, for my chance, yep. but you, you have this gift and use this, use this gift and don't stop, yeah? And this is, this is, don't think you got it. No, 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 no. After you got this, you can get, you can get another one. Yeah, So, so he had to fight for it. Yeah. He had uh, it. Yeah, and, and the thing is, to be honest, I think right now, if you look at the current Omonia squad, we've got so many young players breaking through. You know, we've seen the likes of Johnny's, he's been outstanding this season. Loizzo has broken through. He's been brilliant whenever he's he's given minutes. You know, we've got so many youngsters in breaking through from the academy. And it's almost as if, wow, this next generation, this golden generation is breaking through very much like that 97 team when we had a lot of homegrown players and it's great to see because don't get me wrong I love seeing you know players coming from other leagues to mm -hmm. Cyprus because it helps develop the league de develop players but they also need to be the right players we can't just have players coming in for the money or just <clears> to see it as a, a as a stop gap you know the players yeah. that Omonia currently have must admit they love the club you can tell there's that passion there but they also talk to the youngsters you know we got Gagul Liz who's a very uh, young striker but we know the likes of Duris have spoken to him when Matt Dar Darbyshire was there he was talking to him uh, both the act all these other players they all talk to the youngsters and they keep them grounded as well at the same time which is which is what you need I guess yeah 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 but uh, you you said it right now they have players from her own academy mm. when I was there I I never saw another team like my team yeah. Yeah. And this is also a process, and especially for, for, for a country like Cyprus, I think, of course, you, you need players from, from other countries. Mm. But right now, when I'm looking to the, to the, to the lineups from, from the first division, I see only three, four players from Cyprus in the starting 11. The rest is from all over the world. Mm. But they are really better than the Cyprus players. So start mm. to think and make your own players. Because still, I think football in Cyprus had be more or less number one for, for the young people, for, for the boys and also for the girls to to be part of this sport yeah. and one day you are a player from your club yeah okay. the thing is i think right now the, the cypriot national team are quite lucky because there are lots of young cypriot players <clears throat> breaking through but we've uh, johan valem has done a fantastic job um coming in and he's reduced the average age 
he's picking players that are 23, 24. But we've seen players move on to Juventus. We've seen players move on to other clubs in Europe that are playing for the Cypriot national team. So there is progress being made. Uh, but it's, as you said, it's, it's a process. You, yeah, you've got course. to trust the process. You've got to be patient. And you've got to also integrate the youngsters with the senior players. It's the only way they'll learn. If you, if you don't do this, you, you, you can stop to work. Mm. You have to believe. And you have to know we will have a break. We will have, uh, I don't know how it's called. Sometimes it will not happen. No. And it's not, it will not work. But we have to believe in our way yep. and continue this way. Of course, you, you have to, to look to the left and to the right from, the way, from your way, what has happened there, how they are working there, why they are better, why they are quicker in her process. Mm. And then you have to communicate and mm. you have to be open for, for to risk also some, some things sometimes. Not mm. always, but sometimes, yes, you have to do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we have to talk about this this season i don't i know you don't want to talk about it but we missed out on the title by four points and there was one moment where the fans will obviously never forget it was the penalty miss from from ralphman against an on the penultimate game of the season if we'd have won that we probably would have beat ethnic on the final day and, and and won the league title so how disappointing was it for the whole squad and, and especially for you and and reina who was fantastic that season he scored 40 yeah. 42 league goals Un unbelievable yeah 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 well this was a, a big crash yeah because you were sure we will do it yeah but then we missed and then then you were feeling how 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 many pain it was for, for the whole club. Then you were feeling it. Yeah. And also you were thinking, look, like Reiner, he scored 40, 42 times, but we missed this one. And so you were thinking all what we did before, we, we missed with one missing ball. So it was, we, we, were, we were very sad, yes. But not only, not only the players, I think it was all, all of Cyprus, they, are, they were with Ammonia. And because all were also thinking that we can do this in this year. Yeah. But we missed it. Yeah. There, there were some fantastic victories. We, we're talking seven nils, eight nils, the 10-1. Um, but I think... Uh, the, the title obviously wasn't lost against Anorthosi. It wasn't that one. There were, there were draws against Abolon, against Abuel, teams who we should have beaten. You know, if you look at the league table, I think we were about 10 points ahead of Abo, uh, Abolon, uh, you know, near the end of the season. It was, it was incredible. So there was a massive gap between Anorthosi and, and Omonia and the, and the rest of the teams. Yeah. So it was more yeah. like we dropped points in matches that we shouldn't have done. So that that penalty miss, okay, while it was significant, it wasn't as significant as the drop points against the other teams. And there was a, there was a game where <laughs> you and uh, Mr. Ralphman were substituted. And, and one of our, our listeners, George, wants to know what, what happened? What, what was going on with that one? <laughs> you, left the, you left the stadium or what? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's right. Uh, nobody knows what was happened with him. <laughs> Yeah, this was this was the, the same like like a player. You never know what he will do in the next second. Mm. Yeah, and but he did it also out of the pitch. And then sometimes you you will do things never can be explained. It. Even not him, I think. Yeah, yeah. So you, you guys were substituted at half time, both of you, the two Germans. Two of our yeah, best yeah, players yeah. were substituted yeah, yeah. at half time. So what, yeah. what what happened after that? What did you guys do? <laughs> no, I think this was a, this was a game when we left the pitch. Yeah, yeah, and we we left home. We were living we were close to each other. We were neighbors, and we came home and at home. And next morning training. This this I remember. And then Mikhailidis was speaking some, some words 
and I, I didn't know what, what, what was happened with Rainer, but what you will do with, uh, with, your, with your favorite striker, with your striker number one, who will score 40 goals in one season, you will suspend him? No, you will never do this. Yeah. Maybe he paid something. A fine or something. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. For me, it, uh, I remember, if I remember well, uh, we, we, I spoke with Mikhailidis and I explained it to him and then go on. Show must go on. <laughs> yeah, must go on. So what, what did you and Reiner talk about in the car on the way home? You guys must have been very, very angry. Well, he, he, was say, he was talking about things what I don't want to repeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I remember, well, he was smoking one cigarette or one or two. And, and then he was at home. And I think at home he was speaking with some bottles. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... and, and that's it. Yeah. Well, this no. is it. this is this is the difference between football back then and football now. Back then, you guys went home, you were angry, but then the next day, you spoke to the manager, everything done. Now, the footballer talks to their agent, the agent talks to the newspapers, <laughs> and all of a sudden, there's a massive problem when nothing has really happened. It's normal in football. This is something that happens all the time. Players get substituted, players don't play, players are made to train with the the, the kids. These things happen, but. Because football is so, it's entertainment now. Yes. And it's changed so much. It is uh, one of the biggest business in the world mm. football right now. Yes. And of course, it was also a big business when, when I was playing. But every, everything is growing. Mm. Eh? And you, you had more, more private, private yeah. zone yeah, in my time. You, you can be, can you imagine now the, the best player, uh, Lewandowski, for example, mm -hmm. he, he is drinking a beer at home and next day he will not go to the training or whatever, like this? No, yeah. Yeah. no, he, will, he can't do this. He will not do this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And always you, 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 you have to have your, your mentality for to do this also. Mm. Or you, you say, I'm a professional. When I will finish my career as football player, I have time enough for to celebrate. Yep, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, I've got a couple quick things to talk to you about because I know I've taken up a lot of your time and I really appreciate you coming on. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and, and hopefully we do this again sometime because <laughs> this, this has been a great conversation. Um, when Ralphman joined the club, uh, did you know much about him? Because I know in Cyprus they thought, oh, we've got two German players. And then they saw Ralph and they're thinking, this looks nothing like a striker that we expect from Germany. But he, he proved them all wrong. <laughs> First of all, what do you expect from a striker from Germany in this time? But oh. Rainer, I, I know him. Yeah, he was playing in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. He was playing in Bielefeld. And then he was playing in Austria. I think he was coming from Austria to, to Ammonia, not from Germany, yeah, from an Austrian club. Mm. Uh, I, I know him because uh, from, from the Bundesliga or from, from especially from, from Bielefeld and, and Frankfurt. But I was also thinking, well, he's tall, he is thin, he is fast, <laughs> but more. I didn't know. And he scored. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, and he scored. But uh, more about him, I, I, I didn't know. And I met him in Cyprus, in the hotel, in the elevator the first time. And I didn't know that he was there. And he didn't know that I was there. <laughs> we met in the, in the elevator and then Hey, you are Raufman. Yeah, and you are Hoffman. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ah, you will sign here in Ammonia. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. And that, that was the first time where we met. Yeah. 
It, it must have, it must have been easy for both of you to get used to Cyprus with you two being there speaking the same language. Yes, of course. Yeah. The yeah. language. I, I I tried to to learn Greek. Mm. Yes, or we tried because we we found uh, or we made some friends with a Cyprus woman with Athena and with her German husband. Okay. And and we all together we went to a class in a school. But it was like a primary school and a okay. teacher. Right. And only only four four students. We four students. <laughs> yes. And like you said before, for my wife it was easier to, to learn it. But for me, I I blocked. When he started to speak, I said, no, no, I can't, I can't. The only one is uh, Calimera, Calispera. That's enough. Avrio, 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 in the evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When will you? When when will we? When will you pay? Yourself, Avrio, Avrio. Was... <laughs> yeah, when you're going to get paid, Avrio, and then it, it turns out to be <laughs> Met Avrio, and it's uh, the next week, and it's the week after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it, it sounds like you enjoyed your time at Omonia. You know, um, as I said, it's, it, it's a very special club, and um, every person that I, I've spoken to who have played for the club that isn't from Cyprus tell me the same thing. It's such an amazing place to be. The fans make you feel welcome, and especially when you win trophies and you win games um they, they love you even more for it but I've, I've noticed recently that you know the, the the social media presence has changed the whole scope of football so while you can communicate with footballers it's a great thing but it's also a bad thing because they also get the abuse they also get different kinds of of messages from from supporters but I guess back when you were playing that wasn't around so it was mostly letters or people talking to you face to face did you ever get any bad or hostile reception from people no no different yeah. mentality back then much different mentality yeah it's <clears throat> well like, like i said before i was really focused on on the football on on my performance and on to win yeah and the good thing was uh, i was not alone I was with my with my wife, uh, and I spent a lot of time. We spent a lot of time uh, together there. We went to to different places in 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 Cyprus. We didn't stay only in in Nicosia. Uh, we had this uh, Cyprus friends. We met yes. them. German another German player. But this German player, he was alone there. Kaufmann was alone. Yes, so he had his own life. This was different style of life. Yeah. But uh, of course, sometimes you, you spoke with, uh, with, with uh, Cyprus uh, or Omonia fans. You, you spoke with them. But it was not so easy. Yeah, many times, for example, Jotis, he had to translate when he was by sight, so so it was it was not so easy, but I I will never forget this time, and I will never I will miss this time, and I was not happy not to continue one one more year or more years in in Omonia for to show and for to help to win trophies mm. because this was my target when I arrived. And this was a target from, from Ammonia to win trophies. And I didn't want a trophy. Well, what, was this a decision that you made or was it that the club wanted to, to sell? Did they get a better offer to, bring, to, to sell you? Is that what it was? It was a decision from the club. Yeah. 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 I, I, think I don't maybe... remember the, the names from, from the presidents and from the, the managers. They were responsible in this time, but it was it was not my decision to leave. It must have been difficult because you've left Germany to go to a new country. You were only there for what eight nine months. Nine months. Nine yeah. months. Yeah, 
and then next thing you know, you're having to pack your bags and, and go back home again. It must have been difficult. Yeah. It, it was like holiday, this nine months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, feeling like holiday. It was not holiday, but it was feeling like holiday. And I, before I arrived, I, I had a target and I didn't reach my target. Mm. Yeah. And so, so I was not really happy for to leave because like I said it, and I can repeat it many, many times. It is a nice country, nice people. And for sure they are changing from, from my time when, when I stayed there to today. But uh, I wanted to, to show them more than only nine months what they can have from, from Guido Hoffman. Mm. <clears throat> Well, unfortunately, we can't turn back time, but I'm sure no. if we could, you know, things, you know, you could, things might have been a little bit more different, you know, but. Of course, there you go. always, always you, you can do things better and always, you know, more things in the, in the past, uh, what happened in the yeah. past. You know, right sites, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Guido, one more thing before uh, I let you go, because again, I've had you on for an, over an hour and this is great. And I know you might have things to do for the rest of the day. Um, in terms of Gate 9, the supporters, what was that like, that atmosphere like playing at the Magario? Ah, this was, this was great. And I, I never expected it, yes. Because, you know, I, play, I played in Cape Town mm -hmm. and Cape Town in the 19 was incredible. Yeah. I played in Leverkusen. In Leverkusen was nothing. It was nothing in my time. Yeah, they had to come to the stadium. <laughs> they didn't want to. They had to come to the stadium. And uh, then I have had ammonia, and ammonia was like like Cape Town, and not really like like Borussia Dortmund, for example. This is unbelievable, but but the supporters. They are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, but but you have to be a little bit crazy. Mm. Yeah, everybody. If you are normal, you are on the bottom line. Yeah. You have yep. to be crazy for to jump over. Yeah, and they they were jumping over a lot of times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you got big goals and big games, you know, like your North season, up well. I guess the atmosphere was very, very hostile, home and away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was a that was a nice thing. It was home or away game. It was more than less the same. Mm. Yeah, this is also a pressure, but for me, this is a nice, a positive pressure. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, Guido, thank you ever so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on. We should do this again sometime. When you, you know, obviously when we can talk about other parts of the game because you've got so much knowledge, it's, it's, in, it's incredible. And, um, thank you. you know, it's, uh, thank you again for all your time. Thank you for being uh, an Omonia player as well. You know, you've given us so many good memories, you and uh, Rainer. And um, hopefully again, we'll do this sometime soon. I hope so too. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the nice atmosphere. This is always, always uh, very for me. And regards London, wish everybody a happy Christmas, a nice and, and peaceful Christmas. And if, if we have the possibility for to meet again, I will promise I will do this. Fantastic. And, and regards to Ammonia, of course. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank. You have a lovely week and um, yeah, enjoy your Christmas. You too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.